สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So we're still in pre-holiday season cooking mode. So I thought I would share with you one more Thai-inspired side dish that you could easily put this alongside any kind of Uh, you know, traditional Western-style dinner, and the dish is inspired by one of my absolute favorite ways to have kabocha squash, and that is a pat phak thong or kabocha kabocha squash stir fry with Thai basil. And I do have a recipe for that. I'll link to that below. But I thought instead of doing a stir fry, why not do a do it as a roasted vegetables, but keeping some of that same flavor that I love so much. And I tried it; turned out super super well. Let's get started. So I've got a half of a kabocha squash here, okay? And you only really need half for this. And what I want to do first is scoop out the seeds. And I have this Thai spoon, which is thin and sharp, great for things like this. But you can use any kind of spoon that's thin would be better. And I'm just gonna scoop this out. And for what to do with the rest of the kabocha squash, I'll link to all my kabocha recipe below. So all the seeds are out. I'm gonna scrape off any of the loose, furry bits inside, and now we're gonna cut this into wedges about an inch thick at the at the thickest part of the wedge. A good sturdy knife is important, and here's what I like to do: so I wedge it in, and just wiggle my knife around, and it just kind of makes its way into the squash. Stably. Okay, so you don't need to hack this or anything like that. Kabocha squash. What I absolutely love about it is the skin cooks up soft, and you do not need to peel it. And if you get to the core, don't worry. Just break it. Just get through it, and then we'll cut it off later. In fact, what I'll do is cut that off right now. Same thing with the butt side. Be careful with the last piece because now you've got so little stability. So just be extra careful. The wiggling method is. It's less scary than trying to like power through it. Okay, so this goes on this plate just for now. We'll deal with that later. The other important component of this is garlic. I'm going to use five cloves of garlic, and I'm going to prep them in a, a pretty specific way. So I wanted to show you. I cut the end off, okay, and then I smash it because what I want is a broken. Piece of garlic, and then the peel comes off conveniently. But what I want is these rustic, big, chunky, broken pieces of garlic. That's going to be delicious, beautiful, rustic, and when we roast it, it's going to be soft. And that's the best part. In fact, skip skip the squash. Just do a whole plate of roasted garlic, <laughs> and you can do as much garlic as you want. Um, it doesn't really affect the recipe at all. Tear it up, and if there are pieces that are a bit too chunky, you can cut that down. No big deal. Okay, so that's our garlic, and that's it for the prep. Yes, that's it. Is that it? Yes, and that's it for the prep. Now let's get cooking. This is the best part. I'm going to make a glaze that goes on top of the squash, and this glaze is going to be soy sauce caramel. Basically, garlic soy sauce caramel. That sounds so good. And if you want to use fish sauce instead, which you could, I've done it. I decided to make a vegan version for this one. But the fish sauce is also good, and also you can also try miso, which I think would also be really delicious. So any sort of like fermented, salty umami stuff. But we're gonna stick with the basic soy sauce for this. So I've got a little pot here. I'm gonna first cook up our garlic. Because I want the garlic flavor in the oil, which we're going to use to roast the squash. Garlic goes in here. Don't need to wait for it to get hot. Just give it a couple of minutes of gentle simmering to infuse the flavor. Make sure the heat is quite low. Don't worry about cooking the garlic for now. We're going to cook it in the oven. We're just infusing the flavor. Okay, the garlic is starting to turn a little bit golden, so I'm, I am done with the garlic. I'm going to take them out so they don't burn. Smells good already. Remove any little pieces of garlic in there. Now this is the caramel part. In the same oil, I'm going to add some palm sugar, and you can of course put brown sugar if you like, or even regular sugar, but palm sugar is better. And I'm going to slowly cook this until it's melted. And don't worry about the oil; it'll be there. It's fine. It's not going to mix into the sugar, but it's fine. Now have your soy sauce or fish sauce ready. 
Now watch it carefully. You don't want to burn this. I'm just going to make the color a little bit more intense. And your soy sauce is what's going to stop the cooking. Starting to caramelize for me a little bit. I can probably take it a touch further. Nice. Okay. So I am happy with that. So as you can see, it's not mixed in with the oil. Again, that's okay. We need the oil for the squash. Now, soy sauce goes in. Be careful. Ah! Heat is off now. This is totally normal. Everything is under control. You're fine. And you're just going to swirl it until the sugar is dissolved. And then I'm just gonna let that settle a little bit. Mmm, smells good. If you use fish sauce at this time, there will be fish sauce smell everywhere. Mmm, delicious. I'm just doing it now. I'm trying to think if I should like thin it out with a little water. It's a little bit thick now, so I'm going to try to thin it out with a splash of water just so I can brush it onto the squash a little more easily. There we go. That's a little more like it. Oh, you know what would be really good at this point is if you put butter in here. Mm. All right, let's get to our squash. I've actually never tried it with soy sauce. I've only tried it with fish sauce. <laughs> so here's the plan. I'm going to brush one side of the squash and then flip it over, put it on my baking sheet so that I can then brush the other side. Wait, is that how I'm gonna do it? You know what, let's just brush. So now I've got my squash and my glaze. I'm gonna try to brush the squash on, ooh, that looks good, on both sides. I don't wanna do it directly on my baking sheet because I don't want all this drippage on the baking sheet because the drippage will burn because we're gonna bake this in a pretty high oven. So I'm just gonna do the top pieces first, flip them over, brush them on the other side, and then transfer them over to the sheet pan. Yeah, the first few times I did it, I just brushed them right on the sheet pan, and then I discovered that the drippage burns. Because we have sugar in there, and sugar burns easy. And so the garlic, I'm going to strategically place the garlic within the embrace of the kabocha squash so that they don't burn as quickly, so the squash will sort of protect them so these are going to go into a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes total, but halfway through. So after 10 minutes, we're going to come and do one more layer of glaze and flip them over. So they are extra glazed and cooks evenly. So while the squash is roasting, I'm going to make a basil oil to drizzle on top. And that's going to sort of mimic the Thai basil that gets added to the stir fry. But so it's basically like a quick pesto. Um, so I've got some... I, Ideally, you would use Thai basil, but I couldn't find any, so I got the regular basil at the grocery store, although they look and smell very much like Thai basil, so I don't know. I'm hoping that it was a, a mistake and it's actually Thai basil. I'm going to just chop these quickly. You can do all this in a little food processor if you like, but we're doing such a small amount that it would be, you know, kind of hard to get the blades to spin effectively. So mordon pestle is good for this sort of thing. So all that into my mortar and pestle here and a little pinch of salt. It'll give friction, makes it a little bit easier to grind, but also a little bit of flavor. And now I'm going to add just a healthy amount of oil, just enough to cover it, a couple tablespoons, and then just grind that up until the basil is smushed up and your oil is aromatic. Can you use store-bought pesto? Sure. Okay, and that's it. Just a few swirls and I've got myself nice aromatic oil. And that's all you need to do with it. Just drizzle it on top at the end. Before we move on, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. So if you love my show, I'm going to guess you like to learn and you like to create. So you're probably going to love Skillshare, which is an online learning community with thousands of classes on topics like photography, interior design, cooking, and even how to build a YouTube channel. Most classes are less than 60 minutes long and each one is made up of short lessons. So even for a busy mom like me, it's easy to just watch a few lessons a day and then next thing you know, you're done. 
One class I really like is called The One Yeast Dough You Need to Know by Julia Tertian, and I love it because it gives a really great foundation for bread baking, which is perfect if you're just getting started. So if you want to learn a new skill or explore a new passion, check out Skillshare, and the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and then after that, it's just $10 a month for an annual subscription. Okay. Ah! Slippery! Sliding squash. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reapply our glaze. Man, see the thing with these silicone pads is they're so non-stick, my squashes are sliding all over the place. Okay, I'm going to reapply my glaze because, you know, squashes aren't the most absorbent of things. So you need to apply the glaze a couple of times to get enough flavor on it. And by the way, you don't have to caramelize it. You can just melt the sugar and add the soy sauce. It would make for a much less splattering, I'll tell you that. And then you want to flip them all and then glaze the other side. Oh, I almost forgot. You can also brush the garlic. What I actually wanted to do was uh, put the garlic in the glaze briefly just so they are also seasoned, but I forgot to do that. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of glaze on the garlic so that they get a little bit of flavor. Okay, back to the oven for another 15 minutes or however long it takes for the squash to completely cook through. So use a fork, poke it, and it should go right through. Okay, so I'm going to check doneness by forking the thickest piece. Yeah, that's went through. You can take it out. Oh, look at that. So now two plate. I'm going to have a nice platter. I really need a bigger platter, but this is the one I have. See what I love about kabocha squash is the skin is edible. Um, and so it looks pretty, but if you really for some reason don't like to eat the skin, my husband, for example, you can just easily, you know, eat around it and leave a rind of it at the table. It's no big deal. And then our lovely basil oil. You can artfully drizzle. And if you've got chopped nuts, I don't know, chilies, sprinkles, garnish that with anything else you like. But there it is. How beautiful does that look? It's all about how it tastes though. And suddenly, little basil leaves appear from our photo shoot. Ta -da! And hmm, which one should I eat? I think this one. It's calling my name. I'm going to eat it without the garlic first because I want to eat the garlic separately. Mm. I just love kabocha squash so much. I saved my glaze because you may find that you want a little bit of extra seasoning on the finished squash, which I am going to do. Get extra seasoning on them. You can just drizzle and pour if you like. Okay, now let me try a piece. What would be this? Mmm, yes, that's it, salty sweet umami with the creamy squash. Now I'm gonna try a piece of garlic. I live for that piece of garlic. So good! So good! And the flavor isn't like blatantly Thai or Asian, so it'll still work with the rest of your non-Asian table. Mm, this is so, so delicious. Adam, would you like to try one? Yeah, thanks. I'll give you a garlic. <laughs> Oh my, it's so good. Yeah, right? Is that like almost keto friendly or low carb at least? Or is it, it's all carb, right? It's definitely not keto friendly. I think no. we put too much sugar yeah. in there. Well, I'm thinking of the, the amount of fiber in it, right? Yeah, but it's squash. It's good for you. There you go. It's Yeah, it's just, it's squash, but it's salty sweet. You definitely get that caramel feel, but also the umami. I'm gonna tell you a secret. This is actually the first time I've ever made it with fish soy sauce. Up until this time, it's always been fish sauce for me. And I thought, you know what? I wanna change it up because I am obsessive about fish sauce all the time. Let's try it with soy sauce. But I was so convinced that it was gonna be good. And I was a little bit nervous, but I'm definitely 
I can, with no reservation, go ahead and make it with soy sauce. So the recipe, as always, will be on HatayKitchen.com. A special thanks to our Patreon members who help support the show. If you want to know what that's all about and some extra bonus content that you also get, I'll put the link in the description below. Thank you, as always, for watching, and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.